A unique marine operation is underway right now off the coast of California. A ship is towing a boom about 700 meters long and the device will be scooping up a massive heap of trash floating about in the Pacific. The garbage consists of about 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic and in terms of area it is twice the size of Texas. It's known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It is a very visible symptom of the worsening condition of the world's oceans. But the oceans have their defenders beyond the skipper of that vessel we just showed you. One of them is actor and conservationist Ted Danson. Danson helped create the American Oceans Campaign more than 30 years ago. It's known today as Oceana Canada, and Ted Danson is with me all. So, Ted, nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. I wish them luck. That's a, that's a huge problem. That is a huge. So uh, yeah. tell me about that. I mean, that, it's well. Not... I mean, I, it's I. We're just learning. Uh, not learning. We're just tackling this problem at Oceana as well. Yeah. And this is great. I mean, it's good to clean up. It truly is. But the message should not be this is something we can clean up because a lot of it, you should do what they're doing. I don't mean right. to say that, but you need to stop producing the plastic at source. You got to stop using. Uh, one single-use plastic. The, the industry has to get behind this a, on a global level because it's impossible to clean up all of it. And what happens is it breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. And so it's being ingested by the bottom of the food chain, mm -hmm. which is a really bad thing. And tell me why that is. Tell me because why if you so start bad. wiping out the ba bottom of the food chain, mm -hmm. the, the thing that eats that little thing that's getting destroyed by that little piece of plastic you know, can't be eaten, but you know, you just have a serious impact that goes all the way up to you and me. But the tell good me, news tell me about is the good there are news. a lot of good things that are happening yep. to our oceans, especially for our oceans, especially here in Canada. You guys in the last three years have uh, committed to putting $200 million in the next five years into science, hiring scientists, uh, being transparent about what's going on with the fisheries. Because mm -hmm. if you take care of the world's fisheries, you are actually feeding the world. Because you mm -hmm. could double the amount of fish in the ocean that you could catch and eat if you do all the right things. And Canada is starting to do that, from my opinion. And go online to oceana.ca and discover what's happening here in your country. Because a lot of good things are happening. So you wrote a book on what we can do to save our oceans. I co-wrote a book. You co-wrote a book. Yes, yes. <laughs> you had some help. The actor did not step up and go, here's how you save the ocean. I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm the guy who says, thank you very much for watching Cheers. Uh, I'm standing next to this incredible marine biologist. Let me, let me, you know, let him or her talk to you about what's going on. So I'm clear that my job is to, you know, be the you know, person in front of the tent. The people inside of the tent at Oceana are astoundingly bright. They're scientists yeah. and lawyers, and people have been working for years. So it's interesting know. to hear you be so candid about how you're you're very happy to say, yeah, I'll use my celebrity for this cause that's important to me. Yeah, it Why is. Why not? I've been doing it for 30 years, and it's yeah. uh, it's a great conversation. I mean, you have the opportunity. If you say you're talking about fish, people will go to sleep in you know two seconds. But if you talk about feeding the world. And using, you know, fish, which is a clean protein, you're not using groundwater to make that protein. Mm -hmm. You're not cutting down a rainforest. So if the oceans are harvested correctly and do, you do all the right things, which you are starting to do here in Canada, you know, mm -hmm. you're starting to rebuild your fish stocks. Uh, you're starting to, there's a fishery act coming up that is really important to get behind because you, that, you will commit in that Fisheries Act to rebuilding stocks. Your northern cod, which collapsed mm -hmm. over 20 years ago, has not had a plan in place to rebuild. So it's all very exciting, all the stuff that's starting to happen. So get behind it and uh, you, you know, be You sound like heard. more than just uh, the guy from Cheers who's standing next to the marine biologist. You certainly I've are knowledgeable. I've listened to the marine biologist, so I, I've collected a, <laughs> a bit here and there. Why is it so important? Why are you so passionate about this? Because it's a, it's a disaster that we can avoid. Mm -hmm. um, because if you do the right thing, if you don't use those huge ships that destroy the bottom of the ocean, dragging those huge nets, and you let smaller fishermen trawlers. follow. Yes, the huge bottom trawlers. Yeah. 
You dig up and you bring up everything at the bottom. You throw away a third of it, dead or dying, so you're being wasteful. You use very few personnel on that boat, as opposed to lots of different smaller boats that know how to do it correctly and have been for years. You know, you create more jobs, you create more food, you create more money, create more tax base for the government. If you do the right thing environmentally, you're mm -hmm. doing, you're creating more jobs, which to me is a great message and it's the truth. You are, you're, you're talking a lot about Canada and how you see good things happening. Because I'm a little depressed this... in my own country, all right? Well, I was going <laughs> to, well, no, I, and I was going to ask you a little bit about that because you're talking yeah. about, you know, proper environmental stewardship. Yeah. What, what are you seeing we're, in your country? We're in a kind of deregulation phase in our country where we think it's good for business to take away all regulations. I'm sure it helps a little bit, but in the long run, you're, you're doing, if you're not taking care of the natural resource that you're making your money from, then you're a bad businessman. So I think it's a phase and we'll get through it. Then just finally, is, was there something, did you have that moment 30 years ago or did you have that moment many years ago? You know, because celebrities like yourself, they, they pick causes, you have to pick. And you, w did this pick you or did you pick kind it? Of, I kind of, it? you know, there were a lot of things working. My father was an archeologist, he was a scientist. Yep. I had that kind of sense, even though I was off playing and not paying a lot of attention that we're stewards you know, of our time that we're on this planet. Mm -hmm. So leave things in better shape than when you got them, kind of philosophy. Um, I was walking on a beach with my kids when I was shooting Cheers, and there was a sign, don't go swimming, water polluted. I couldn't answer why, it mm -hmm. looked gorgeous. What could be the problem? Mm -hmm. You know, you can get a piece of fish anywhere, what's the problem? And when I started to dig deeper and deeper, I realized, um, and I started an organization with a friend of mine who was an environmental lawyer. So I've, I've learned more and more and more. But it's a great conversation, you know? It is feed the, Save the oceans, feed the world. Ted, Can't beat that. <laughs> Sorry. Appreciate you, appreciate you coming in. It was Thanks. Good to speak Thanks to for you. letting me babble at you. Actor and conservationist Ted Danson of Oceana Canada with me here in studio.